PARP inhibitors right now are available for men that have homologous repair deficiencies or in Europe, BRCA mutations, um, and who have failed already a, an AR therapy and have castrate resistant disease. The, there is a, a gradually increasing benefit um, for PARP inhibitors, uh, number one in BRCA2 mutated patients, but in other BRCA pathway um, genes such as BRCA1, um, PALB2, some of the RAD51 uh, genes particularly, there's a lesser benefit um, for Alaparib, for example, in patients with ATM mutations or CHECK2. Uh, there are some patients that can respond and have prolonged stable disease in these patient populations. Um, and so that's part of the broader FDA label. But as you've seen in the PROPEL study, the magnitude study, and many ongoing trials such as the amplitude study or TALAPRO studies, the field is generally looking towards combinations to broaden the impact of PARP inhibition in synergy with AR inhibition. AR regulates DNA repair, particularly homologous repair. So when you block AR, you create this potential relationship with PARP inhibition. Whereas we've shown in the PROPEL study, there can be uh, very much be uh, greater benefits and delays in progression, even in patients that have no detectable BRCA mutations. Um, so there's some potential synergy there. We're still waiting to see the overall survival results for these trials, but we anticipate that as data matures, we'll, we'll have demonstrable clinical benefits uh, for these combinations. And the trials are now moving into the hormone-sensitive setting instead of castrate-resistant setting, where there may be even greater synergy.